Hey, what is up everyone? Aaron here with Warp Academy. And in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how you can use Ableton 10's new device pedal to really add more impact and presence to your recordings. I'm going to describe all the tweakable parameters of the device, and then I'm going to apply the effect in three different scenarios, on bass, drums, and vocals. But first, to celebrate the launch of Ableton 10, our crew here at Warp Academy has put together a really amazing new course for you. It's really the fastest way to get up to speed with all the new instruments, effects, and power features of Live 10. You'll get expert video tutorials from our team of Ableton certified instructors, plus sweet downloads like project files, samples, and synth patches to really amp up your library. Oh, did I mention that right now, for a limited time, it's totally free to sign up? Just click on the link, bounce over to Warp Academy, and it's yours. It takes 30 seconds to sign up, and you get lifetime access. Now on to Pedal. Pedal is an audio effect newly introduced in Ableton 10 that emulates the sound of familiar analog guitar pedals. This device features three circuit-level distortion modes, each one with very different tonal qualities. This device is a powerful effect for guitars, but it's also suited for adding presence and energy to vocals, destroying drums, and it can easily turn a bass guitar recording from this to this. Let's look closer at the parameters of the device. Pedal contains all common device parameters, including the device activator switch, device title bar, remote control indicator, the hot swap button, the save preset button, and the dry wet settings. The gain control adjusts the amount of distortion applied to the signal. The higher the percentage, the more distortion you'll hear. Be aware that when the gain knob is set all the way to 0%, it's not removing the distortion from the signal completely. If you want to remove the distortion from the signal, I recommend turning the pedal device off or adjusting the dry wet control. After you've applied some distortion to your signal, you may find it necessary to boost or cut the output volume of your device to maintain a consistent gain stage throughout your device chain. The output knob controls the overall output gain of the affected signal and can cut or boost the signal by 20 decibels. Let's observe the differences between the three pedal types, overdrive, distortion, and fuzz. I'm also going to apply a spectrum analyzer to the device chain so that we can see what the effect is doing to our signal. The first of the three pedal types is the overdrive setting, which sounds warm and smooth. The overdrive setting sounds similar to that of a slightly overdriven tube amp. Let's listen to it as I slowly increase the gain of the distortion on my bass recording. The second pedal type is the distortion setting, which sounds tight and aggressive. It also applies a slight gain increase to the dry signal, but it sounds much brighter in color than the overdrive. The final pedal type is the fuzz setting, which sounds heavy and broken and much brighter than both the distort and the overdrive settings. The bass knob allows you to adjust a peak filter positioned at 100 Hz. This helps to enhance the low end of your distorted signal. The mid knob allows you to adjust the amplitude of a peak filter with the choice of one of three frequency ranges. The switch below the mid knob allows you to select between 500 Hz, 1000 Hz, or 2 kHz. The Q of this peak filter is the most narrow at the lowest frequency range. The treble knob allows you to adjust a high shelf EQ with a cutoff around 3 kHz. The sub button activates a low shelf EQ to boost frequencies below a cutoff of 250 Hz. As you can see and hear, with the sub button activated, there's a significant boost in those bass frequencies below 250 Hz. 
The pedal device can also be used on other instruments like drums. Check out how using the pedal device on this snare drum really brings it out in the mix. Let's jump over to another session where I'll show you how pedal device can be useful for adding a bit more presence to vocals. Using this effect rack that contains pedal on the fuzz setting, I'm going to demonstrate how adding a little bit of distortion to the vocalist near the end of a musical phrase can really help to build anticipation and add energy to your mix. Try experimenting with the pedal device by adding it to other sounds in your mix, like pads or sweeps. You might be surprised to find that by adding just a little bit of distortion and maybe an automation curve near the end of a musical phrase, it really helps build anticipation and add energy to your production. If you liked what we covered in this video, we've got lots more where this came from in our free Warp 10 course. Rather than wasting your precious studio time sifting through a sea of tutorials, we've put everything you want to know about Live 10 in one place. Our entire team of Ableton certified trainers has spent the last three months making this custom course just for you. Hop on the fast track and learn Live 10 at warp speed. Click the link, jet over to Warp Academy, and you'll get instant lifetime access.